Hi folks, welcome to this episode of Hit the Mahogany. Uh, time of this one, it's actually a, a particular type of flowering season. Uh, let me guess what these are. Sakura, cherry blossoms. Okay, so we have some salty cherry blossoms. We have some sake, some gin, and a little dash of maraschino liqueur here. What are we going to be doing? We are going to be doing a Sakura cocktail. All right, so we're going to keep this one nice and chill, I think. You know, it's always, uh, you know, this one, this is uh, from a bar Gotto in New York. And uh, apparently I haven't been there yet, but I'm certainly going to make a trip there at some point. Uh, this is their house martini. The base of this martini, though, is predominantly sake. And I'm really looking forward to trying this one, have not tasted this one. But if it's anything like some of the other attention to detail that the Japanese pay to particular things such as the food, the drink, and how they actually present that, uh, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. A really good example of that is a, a Toki Highball, Japanese whiskey highball. Absolutely fantastic, really chilled. Up here, check out the video for that. They really did turn that into an art. Just a very simple highball, but absolutely fantastic. And as you can see here, the sake, just the way that this is actually wrapped. Now I've actually got, we've got a friend who, a uh, Japanese friend, lives in Japan, and we meet up with her uh, quite as, as often as possible. And uh, she's always bringing gifts, and uh, who are we to say no to a very nice bottle of whiskey? Eh, uh, whiskey? I wouldn't say no to that, but a very nice bottle of sake. Now this sake, if I recall, as she said, was actually her father's uh, favourite sake. I don't know what the brand is. Uh, it's fair to say that I have been trying to learn Japanese over the last couple of years, but I uh, haven't been making much progress. It's not exactly easy, and as you get older as well, I think it becomes a little bit... Nah, maybe I'm just making excuses. But this is the sake. Here, let's get this out. Now, this has actually been chilled down as well. But what a lovely bottle, isn't it? It really is. It's just the label, everything is just really nice about it. Uh, for the gin that we're going to use in this, we're going to stay in Japan. We're going to use uh, Roku gin. Uh, Roku uh, is Japanese for the number six, and that reflects the uh, uh, the, the types of bota or specific botanicals that they're using in this. I also have a video where I actually talk a little bit more about Roku. I'll dig that one out and put that one up in the top corner as well. Now we've got maraschino liqueur here, cherries from the Dalmatian coast that are uh, used uh, to make the, the liqueur. Uh, we're going to start making this. Let's start making it, why not? Alright, I'm going to be making two of these. Uh, and let's get this in. For each one, it's two and a half ounces of sake. Oh, you know what? I, I actually really, I'm going to take a little taste of this. Again, you know what? You should taste each of these ingredients before you... Uh, use it in a cocktail itself. Now sake isn't high proof, so this isn't a particularly high uh, proof cocktail, but because it goes down so easily, yes I've been caught out a couple of times when I've been on a, uh, been over to, been lucky enough to go over to Japan, or uh, uh, just in the house actually to be honest. Mm. It, there's a dryness about it, it's also sweet at the front, and then it dries at the end. It's very difficult to actually describe it until you... You need to really taste this yourself. It's certainly not for everybody, but uh, I happen to... I happen to quite like it. And the... the there, there's just like a... The aftertaste... Uh, there is an aftertaste, but it's actually a very nice aftertaste. It's almost a... It's almost a... It's like a little bit of... Aromatic, almost like a little perfume, certainly from this one anyway. It's delicious. Mmm. Mm. Uh, there's some of the sakis out there, uh, a couple of from Kyoto, which are sparkling sakis. They are fantastic as well, really nice. If you like sparkling wines, certainly try sake. Made from rice. Rice wine type thing, isn't it? Who would have thunk? Mmm. 
All right, let's get into this. A uh, two and a half ounces for each one. I'm making two, so that's going to be five in total. Okay, so that's two, four, and five. There we go. Little bit late. There we go. A uh, gin, only one ounce of gin. And what you can think of with respect to this is you're really swapping out the vermouth, the dry vermouth in a martini with the sake. It is dry. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so one ounce of the gin. Uh, yuzo, I think is one of the uh, one of the citrus fruits that are used in this. And uh, you can smell it comes through strong. Just Almost a nice balance with the uh, the actual uh, juniper that you get coming through that as well. All right, so that was two ounces. That was one ounce for each one. And then maraschino liqueur. It's only a quarter of a teaspoon. Uh, so I am just going to guesstimate this, okay? So a quarter of a teaspoon. One. Two. So we'll say about half a teaspoon in there in total for these ones. Okay, and before I start mixing this up, actually, I was. I'll see if I've, I'll see if I can put in a, a collage of photographs into this video. But I was lucky enough, a uh, tattoo artist uh, that I have that uh, does the tattoos for me, uh, is a, a Horizaru, and he's actually based in the Tabata district in Tokyo. And one of the times I went over, I was I went to get two sittings to fill in the the, the color of this tattoo. Uh, that was uh, needless to say, on the flight back, my uh, arm was feeling slightly larger than what it normally did. But the time I was over there wasn't planned. It was actually I think it's going to be about four years, three or four, four about four years ago when I was there was exactly at the time of the prime blooming of Sakura, the cherry blossoms over there. And it was just absolutely fantastic, and my my friend over there took me around to all the the, the great locations to actually see the the, the cherry blossoms. Uh, I think one of the big places was uh, was it Uyeno Park, uh, but it was absolutely heaving, packed out, people, you know, picnic blankets everywhere. But when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. They're just taking the spaces up so they can actually get the best view of these blossoms. And to be honest, I think it was actually a good excuse for a lot of people to actually have a. Let's just say a few beverages at the same time as well. There were a few hammered people there. Hmm. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Horizaru, he comes over. He visits State of Grace Tattoo in uh, San Jose. And just before, I don't know the time I'm making this one, just before the uh, 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 coronavirus uh, hit, I started this uh, tattoo on this arm. But because of the coronavirus and all he's been travelling, I haven't been able to get it finished. So, it's been a couple of years. If that's the worst thing that can happen to us, then uh, then we're doing pretty well. If you can't get your tattoo finished, oh boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Uh, fingers crossed, we'll all get an opportunity to travel a little bit more, anyway. Uh, so, if you are interested in uh, getting tattoos, check out uh, Horizaru there. He's great, and actually the, the folks at State of Grace, even although I, I haven't got a tattoo there, the uh, the crew there, uh, some of the work uh, is, is pretty fantastic. Check out uh, Mon Mon Cats. Uh, I'll leave it that. You'll have a good chuckle at that one, Eric. Okay, I think that was it. Nice chill, nice relaxed uh, little chat. Shall we keep making this? All right, let's get this one chilled down. Nice in. Let's get this slightly diluted and a little bit chill. Okay, about 20 to 30 seconds there. Look at my glass here, what's in there? Oh, I know what it was. There's a little bit of uh, in the cherry blossom when I was opening it up, I think it got stuck in there. All right, chill down. A couple of glasses. Here we go. Whatever you want, cook. Traditional martini glass, whatever you think is going to look good here. Let's get this strained out. Mm. 
And you know what? It just looks like a standard martini, doesn't it? There we go. All done. So, salted cherry blossoms. You might see them as salted pickled cherry blossoms. I think the word pickling is actually just meaning that the fact that they've been pickled with salt. Uh, edible. Uh, they actually come like a cluster in here. I've already taken a few out and separated them. And this is good for a laugh, isn't it? I'm actually using uh, chopsticks here. <laughs> uh, somebody who's got essential tremors, that really works out well. So we've got one cherry blossom in there. Now, the reason you can use the cherry blossom here is what normally goes into a cocktail like this. You know, you put in an olive in. So, these are salted, so you're getting the equivalent of the salt of an olive, but you're getting it from your cherry blossom. A great idea, isn't it? It's fantastic. I've got a few of these here. I'm just going to pick this up with my fingers. So hopefully you can see what it looks like there a little bit. There's your cherry blossom. Edible. Uh, as I say, try that. I haven't actually eaten one of these yet. I don't know. That was not the best idea, eating it straight off the bat like that, as I've now found out. The amount of salt in that was wicked. That's my salt intake for the day anyway. But the flavour of itself, delicate, sweet. Now I know what a cherry blossom tastes like. <laughs> Now I'm probably going to be using that in some, something else that I taste as well. Mmm, that tastes like a cherry blossom because I know what one tastes like. Mmm. Oh. Got to use the sake for something, haven't I? I'm going to have to get through the balance of this bottle tonight, I think. Mmm. Okay. We now have our Sakura Martinis whipped up. Still floating there, whatever that was. I'm not going to take a picture of that one. That's the one I'm drinking anyway. Let's give this a taste, okay? Cheers. Oh, hey. I, I, I just love being surprised by these drinks. They're things that you just, they just pop out at you. So this one, the gin, it's actually just the right amount. Now, depending on the type of gin that you have, Roku's got quite a distinct flavor to it. Maybe if you're using something a little bit more juniper forward, you're going to get that kick as well. I would stay away from something that is too junipery. It's going to take away from that subtle sackiness. Uh, and you're going to be battling with the, the actual maraschino liqueur there a little bit. The raw cue is probably just a, a, a good one there. Maybe Tanqueray would be a good one as well, just to give that a shot. Something nice and, you know, good straight up. Uh, even botanist gin, actually, Scottish one, would probably go nicely with this. God, I'm selling everything tonight, eh? Holy mackerel. Selling everything from tattoos to gins from all over the world. Mmm. It's clean. It's fresh. You know, there's just a little bit of salt coming through from the... the, the Sakura, the cherry blossom there. So, so the dryness, it's really funny, it's pretty cool actually, how the sake has been swapped out uh, for the vermouth. Uh, and it's really, really nice. And that maraschino liqueur just pairs nicely with it. That is somebody, if, you, if you're looking for just a clean, straight up drink, then you can't argue with that, you know? And uh, just seeing the cherry blossom in there, uh, it's just, it's, it really is a wicked nice touch. I'm going to enjoy these ones, that's for sure. All right. Everybody. Uh, Kampai and enjoy your uh, Sakura martinis. Definitely a good one. Cheers.